I just think back to the the journey we've been on. I mean, it's been it's been amazing to see how you just even just 10 years ago the a lot of the hoops and challenges we had to jump through to see it mature to today where it's the default and of course being here in Toronto Linux Con is amazing. It's great to great to finally get to thank uh, Mr. Torvald for my career and, and his contributions and everything. It's, it's 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 just been an amazing journey over the over the time. Yeah, it's hard to believe that it's been 25 years. I uh, I think back to uh, my first foray into Linux, like 1998, and a friend of mine, I was new in computer science, you know, a student in college, and uh, I'd gotten a brand new laptop, and uh, I uh, I had, uh, I knew the stats of it, you know, exactly what processor, everything like that, and uh, I was all proud of it, I was showing it, I had Windows 98 on it, and, uh, and he goes, well, why don't you put Linux on it? And I go, what's Linux? And he goes, you don't know what Linux is? And so next thing you know, here I am. 20-ish years, you know, 18 years later, using Linux, briefing analysts, briefing journalists, you know, talking about where Linux is going, talking about open source. I mean, it's it's interesting to see how far this has changed in 18 years. About 10 years ago, I had a career change where I had a chance to start uh, a, a small company that was based on being able to, based on the work I was doing on the Linux kernel. And it's it has been a huge part of my life, not just professionally, but all of the people that I've met and that I've had a chance to become friends with through working on the kernel has completely changed, uh, changed, the, changed my life. I have a heart condition. I am at a very high risk of suddenly dying. And uh, I have a pacemaker defibrillator and I cannot see the source code in my own body. And this has a lot of fundamental problems. And what the Linux kernel stands for is the proposition that we can do things differently, that we can do things ethically, and that we can, through collaboration, build a better society. I first started uh, getting involved with Linux actually in the mid-90s with a distribution called Yggdrasil. I was working at Cygnus Support at the time, doing software, uh, support for GNU software. And um, found it to be very intriguing and uh, found that over the next, I guess that was almost 20 years ago, um, Linux has been a part of my work life uh, in an increasing manner. Everything from uh, embedded systems all the way to high performance um, clusters, all kinds of things, including desktops. And, uh, and it's been really fantastic. And what I actually really like the most about the Linux world is not even the technology. It's the, uh, the act of participation and the, the group project part of it. And that's what really drew me into becoming a community manager after having been a technical writer for 20 years. It's really meant a lot to the history of computing. Uh, certainly in my career, uh, being able to focus on Linux uh, from the beginning, almost 17 years ago for me, uh, has been a lot of fun. Uh, it's been stable and good. All of my professional life, uh, if I haven't been using Linux directly, I've been using it indirectly because my day job would be Unix, but I'd actually use uh, Linux to get my work done on, uh, on cheaper hardware. Uh, it's basically touched every job I've had on my, my resume and uh, I actually fell into a role of where I was helping people on my team learn how, to, how things were done uh, on Unix and, and in embedded systems which took me to the teaching side of things because it meant that I could share how things should be done as opposed to people trying to uh, come up with their own way, their own new way of doing things. Uh, one of the great things about the Linux community is the people you meet, uh, the things that you learn and uh, the, you, you actually find that problem spaces are actually the same. I've actually worked in a lot of different industries, um, originally telecom, then datacom, wireless, optical, automotive, defense, medical, uh, the games industry, and uh, you know, a lot of it is the same and a lot of it is different, but uh, the fact is, is that the bottom half of a lot of these industries are all the same. They're all Linux based, and you can do just about anything you want on top of that.
happened was when I first started was I was working for a defense industry and I was working with the AIX systems, Sun systems, and I knew they were kind of a dying culture. I wanted to get with that new Microsoft product on the PCs. But when I first started using Microsoft, I was thinking, this is so limiting. I wish there was Unix for the PC. And I got so frustrated, I finally screamed it. Can't they make a Unix for the PC? And this intern sitting next to me turns around and says, have you ever heard of Linux? This is back in 1996. I went down, downloaded a bunch of Slackware. I got found Red Hat. I looked at a Red Hat license. I was so impressed by this GPL license that said, we encourage you to share our software, which was unheard of back then. And little be known, I became so obsessed that I eventually became a Red Hat employee. About 25 years back, like I'm in the school, like where there were hardly any teachers, and I was like studying myself, and you know there come like there comes like in big boom in America, like you know we found computers and you know um, Microsoft, and then like finally we heard about Linux. Um, I'm so glad actually I met we met to this conference and we had pictures with Linus and uh, we shared in the. Uh, social networks and it's one of the greatest uh uh, really great moments for us. One of my favorite things that I used to do, this would be uh, early 2000s, 1999 era, was mess around with floppy Linux distributions, uh, which were interesting. They were a Linux distribution that was small enough to run on a single floppy disk. And this was just a pet project. There were a bunch of different distributions. Eventually one came along that actually had a decent editor and SSH, uh, which made me super happy as uh, having an SSH client. Now, it was just a fun project until uh, my main computer crashed. Now, it was a Linux machine, but the hard drive went down. And because the hard drive went down, I couldn't do anything except that I had this floppy Linux distribution. So I was able to plug that thing in, boot up my computer, and it was a pretty lightweight environment, but it allowed me to get some real work done at the time, which was super critical. Fantastic! It's revolutionized the world and it's changed everything. Um, I, remember, I basically grew up with Linux. I uh, am 29 years old, and I was, uh, you know, when I was a little kid, it was one of the first things I came across. When I was in middle school, I installed uh, Slackware, my very first distro, on an old clunker 46 I had at you know, 33 megahertz and like four, four megabytes of RAM. It was awesome because I actually found something I can actually run with and tinker with. And I blew up my box several dozen times along the way, but that's the joy of Linux, uh, especially early on. Um, 25th anniversary is nice. It, it matured all, all, so much for the past past two decades, past three decades even. Um, it, it's gone up from you know this simple little toy he'll play with to this thing that runs servers, data centers, cars, devices, everything, and it's everywhere. And it's truly a dream come true to work for the Links Foundation and actually help things and um, to be part of making this revolution happen. Open source is something that's actually feasible in this world and Linux is the leading person, leading, leading um, thing behind that and it's just fantastic.